Content warning, mild to heavy cursing. We fucking made it! Hampshire College class of 2016, that is you, that is us. Congratulations to all of us in making it through this cruel, intense, traumatizing, violent, ruthlessly unforgiving, yet life-changing and enriching institution. <laughs> My name is Javier Torres de Llanon. <laughs> I prefer he, him pronouns, and I am like you, 100% bell rung, div free. It is my honor to have been chosen to deliver this address, and I am blessed to be standing here next to Zynga, Quasi, Professor Amy Jordan, Jordan Perry, and Reina Gosset. I now suggest you hold on to your graduation hats, your divs, and to your racist uncles. <laughs> so first off, I do want to remember, I want you to remember every single word of this speech, of this event, because I know that we, Black and brown speakers, whatever we say will be twisted into complacency. We will become tokens for this campus to profit off, our images appropriated like those before us. I am here elected as a quote unquote aware and radical brown body, but there is nothing radical about me, my body or my speech, next to the black femmes, black women, black trans women, black gender non-conforming bodies who have initiated every single radical movement of this country's history, yet keep being erased from our memories. Black humans, black humans, thanks to whom I am here, to whom any of our movements are here, to whom our communities are still alive. They are dehumanized by our world and our campus, and we breathe off their backs and their blood, and our cultures and languages exist because of their wit and intellect and resistance and ability to reimagine futures for them and their descendants. <laughs> Hampshire College, <laughs> Hampshire College, if you are going to dare to quote anything from these words, may it be the ones I just said. <laughs> and now, to the black femmes, to the black women, to the black trans women and black gender non-conforming bodies in the audience, I can only say, middle fingers up, put them hands high, wave it in his fist, tell him boy, bye. Boy, bye, boy, bye. Whew. So I came to Hampshire College, like many of you, four years ago, with the dream of attending a private liberal arts non-traditional school in New England to attain a degree to move up social ladders, kidnapped by those in power. I was promised a place of intellectual discovery, of free minds, and to an extent, this promise was delivered. Now I am here after much cheating, after much lying, and after much lending money, and I am navigating a system that hated me four years later, four years wiser, more jaded, and more taken for granted. These past weeks have been the most violent and traumatic days I have experienced in this campus, and it has dematerialized my so-called Hampshire spirit. I have seen dozens of students destroyed by our, the heartless friv frivolity of our administration, and as always, it is us students led by black femmes who have to take care of each other. These past weeks, I was called suicidal by an administrator. I was told that I was threatening and unsafe for campus by an administrative assistant. And perhaps my favorite was attempted to be given level two probation, that is, being removed as commencement speaker by two well-known administrative students. Did y'all really think it'd be that easy to get rid of me? <laughs> Better luck next time. But enough about me, <laughs> back to why we're here. I stand in front of you delivering a speech celebrating our graduation. We are graduating with a costly BA under our arms, a huge privilege in itself. It is the end of our Hampshire lives and beginning of the real world. However, in the spirit of Hampshire, I wanna interrogate this notion because why is it not the real world in here? There's a fabricated illusion that Hampshire College is somehow not part of this world, the Hampshire bubble, a utopic, postmodern, post-racial fairy tale in which the villains of capitalism, white supremacy, and U.S. imperialism have been defeated, in which humanity has evolved beyond violence and systems of power. This is bullshit. Our neoliberal school embraces the latest fabrication of feel-good capitalism, social entrepreneurship, 
and it green washes every single lawn space we have. We cut budgets, we offer no security to our food makers, emotional laborers, maintainers, or adjunct faculty. We silence survivors, get them expelled, and keep perpetrators on this campus for their precious tuition. Hampshire systematically welcomes and protects anti-blackness and hatred. Black Lives Matter is silenced or co-opted while swastikas breed around bathrooms in our dorms. We say that we are for undocumented students, yet only have two who are both cis males, whose aid is always questionable, and who have no institutionalized support systems. Unlike other offices on campus, when our cultural center director leaves, the school overworks to sickness the interim and haphazardly gets underpaid employees that are promptly also overworked to the core. Hampshire College is capitalist, sexist, rape culture, racist, prison industrial complex, trans misogynistic. Hampshire College is US American. And we are so liberal that we pretend that we are better than anyone or anything else. Simply put, our institution, stuck under white, cis hetero, patriarchal liberalism, fosters dissenters and nonconformists because it fails us. It fails its own values to such an extent. This real world of hatred, of violence, and oppression causes Hampshire students to be often forcefully active in resistance, disruption, and radicalism. And our generous academic structure allows for it. Our professors underpaid are anti-academia and anti-establishment, but are often anti-black, uninformed, and increasingly not visibly committed to the lives of our students unless they are exceptionally compassionate or see growth through us. Our staff, even more underpaid, are sometimes awake and pro-liberation, but cannot be too loud, because like faculty, they will be fired or socially killed until they see no other choice but to resign. Our administrators relatively overpaid are false images of anti-fossil fuels and anti-corporations to the point that we actually need a creative chief officer to make sure that our image is clean, polished, green, digestible, consumable. Like UC Davis, the new workplace of our forsaken former president, present day Hampshire invests thousands in image and branding instead of human support and resources. From the chaos left by wars and by the, through the birth of neoliberalism appears this 1970s college, which increasingly grows distance to its supposed unruly spirit. You see, when the supposed typical Hampshire students enter a space, they question and they criticize it. They call out the deafening whiteness of our environments. They bring necessary liberatory discomfort and innovation. They are shunned because they are too Hampshire, which is synonymous for too just and too engaged. Too Hampshire represents values and aspirations which this world needs a lot of. Too Hampshire bends, changes, and breaks rules is disruptive and anti-mainstream. But my sense is that this type of Too Hampshire student might fade into non-existence if things go as they have these past two years of strategic planning. We are seemingly trying to become an elite little ivy and perhaps only when Division Three is touched will our alumni wake up from their slumber to alter their alma mater. It is my hope that classes to come will continue to reflect Hampshire's unruliness and not only hollow, uncritical entrepreneurs of dollar making and idea experimenting. If you haven't been able to tell, I'm a staunch critic of Hampshire College. <laughs> but this is because I have loved it. But my commitment has vanished after these past weeks chaos and trauma which has, was followed by the silence of our administration. I am thankful for the knowledge Hampshire has given me, aware of the multiple funds it has given me, and infinitely blessed for the friends, professors, and mentors I have met. Yet I would lie if I said that Hampshire has treated me well. I would lie if I said I feel appreciated by Hampshire. This school continues to enroll and retain rapists. Parents and donors are giving money to a college that keeps rapists and invisibilizes survivors into nothingness. Your nostalgic Hampshire College alumni is currently inaccessible to students unless we are white and complacent. We hide under artificial diversity concepts and we have yet to fully divest from the fossil fuels or prison industrial complex. And yet, despite all of this, the paradox does remain my mind would remain shackled without the tumultuous Hampshire experience. Because this rural campus of no grades or majors is a site of daily contestation, interrogation, and growth. 
We do ask the uncomfortable questions, which opens up more questions than answers. And we and you are uncertain and accustomed to uncertainty. We're successful in uncertainty. That's the whole divisional system. <laughs> the mainstream is boring and it is oppressive. And we, graduating class of 2016, are about to confront it in all of its splendor, ugliness, and shortcomings. Because in spite of it all, this school has prepared us for the real, real world. And the knowledge and networks we have built here will stay with us. Indeed, it is not so much that we are not ready for the world, but that the world is not ready for us. And yet, in the Hampshire spirit, we'll come uninvited anyways. We'll create new jobs, we'll destroy old ones, and push power out of the hands of the ancient. All this being said, things are pretty unsettled in the country we're standing in, directly related to what has happened here and embedded in historical realities of the settler colonialist United States of American empire. Right now, demanding justice under the banner of hashtag Black Lives Matter is more controversial and systematically threatening than to gather a KKK-supported audience and demand the expulsion of all non-white bodies. Trump, the big, rich, white elephant in the rooms of our country, is unsurprisingly winning on a platform of hate, racism, sexism, and war mongering, mongering values this empire holds close to its heart. A result of history, his worlds of ignorance and perjury are more permissible in the corporate media he funds than the screams of the oppressed, than the activism of those killed by his police. We are graduating when assaulting a black protester in a disgusting rally is still being allowed, when being a black trans woman or a black man in a hoodie or just existing as black is still a death sentence when facing security forces. When blackness is being further destroyed by Clinton-Bush monarchies, exploited by those behind and in front of me, ransacked by vomit-inducing Iggy Azaleas and Macklemores, exterminated by the prison industrial complex to protect those in power. We graduate to a world where so-called freedom of speech has been hijacked by an exuberantly wealthy thought police. To criticize the colonial state of Israel is prohibited, it is demonic. Yet to erase any conversation of racism and genocide is welcomed. It is to be a rightful warrior against so-called PC culture. A time when feminism is further appropriate, whitewashed and sterilized by a contradictory Clinton who would gladly turn her back at the destruction her monstrous opponents are advocating under liberalism. 2016 is a year when feel-good liberals have deposited their hopes on yet another white old man who would invariably continue to replicate the global US empire under whom the entirety of the state would continue to work as it has. Because we understand that Sanders in power would perpetuate black trans genocide, the prison industrial complex, militarization of the police, President Barack Obama's deportation regime and bloody drone strikes, the plundering of the global south, the recolonization of our lands through gentrification and so on. These are undoubtedly revolutionary times where our worlds are at a brink. And so I ask you, class of 2016, and all of those present, where will you be in the revolution? Will you join resistance and change, radical blackness and indigeneity, futures that will exterminate the unjust present? Will you cower behind those historically in power, masculinity and whiteness, and crush the oppressed, a future of oblivion and destruction? Or will you remain comfortably neutral and complacent, continuing to consume and indulge and orgasm and intoxicate and forget while the wars get closer to your home, while the lives of the children are being determined in your fleeting dystopia? I trust that Hampshire College graduates will stand on the truly good side of history, that side that is bleak, that is uncertain, and repeatedly erased because of its justice, because of its truthfulness. It is our choice what we do with our degrees. However, it would be very arrogant for me to not recognize that we couldn't be here without others. Our individualism says that we are supposed to succeed alone, be independent, and defeat all those that come against us. These ideas are professed by life coaches and entrepreneurs and are pure bullshit because we as human beings literally need each other to survive. I reject the notion that anyone here made them by themselves. We are here because of our parents, guardians, mentors, professors, GoFundMe donors, 
cousins, gods, role models, ancestors, frenemies, angels, demons. Because of this, I want to recognize those present who are not graduating, but who helped us get to these seats. Without their help and care, the systems around us would have crushed us into non-existence. Personally, I would like to thank the woman who gave me life and has kept me alive ever since my mother. <laughs> Mami. Hace cuatro años, a cinco mil kilómetros de distancia, dirigí un discurso de graduación, también en inglés, en el Teatro Centro de Arte. Gracias a ti, me gradué del Colegio Americano, y hoy, gracias a ti, me gradué de Hampshire College. Gracias, mami, por empujarme adelante y seguir a mi lado ante las adversidades de este mundo, por criarme, amarme, aceptarme y nunca rendirme, nunca permitirme rendirme. Extiendo estas gracias a todas mis madres, madrinas, tías y abuelas, porque es por ellas que sigo de pie con la frente en alto en este podio. Thank you to our protectors, to our parents and guardians. Yet beyond recognizing those that didn't make it here, I also want to make spaces, I mean, I want to make space for those that didn't make it here. Those friends who left Hampshire because it wasn't the best fit. Those friends who were burned out by our venomous culture and were not caught by our weak mental health support systems. Those friends who were sexually assaulted and saw no fair repercussions brought down to their perpetrators. Those friends who were racially attacked, racially ignored, and racially erased. Who had their financial aid packages slaughtered into expulsion because I want to emphasize this school is fucking hard. And to graduate from it, it is a magnificent achievement. And I am proud of us for making it and certain that there is nothing we can't achieve after going through this institution. We survived Hampshire College when all the odds were against us. Our once biodiverse community garden was hastily exterminated under short-sighted green development to get rid of a powerful yet nutritious weed, comfrey. This powerful weed, comfrey, is like us. Like many of us, they have tried to bulldoze us over and over and over again for the sake of cleanliness and for Western mindsets of productivity. But we, we keep coming back stronger, surviving against all odds, spreading our invasive seeds for futures we are fearless to imagine. <sighs> to close off, <laughs> I have a final dedication in this speech to a certain population we know well, that I know too well, and that will follow us for the rest of our lives. The haters. We have a lot of them sitting around us this day. What did you learn four years in a hippie school? How are you possibly ready for society after this expensive four-year PC summer camp? Class of 2016, the haters will follow us to the grave. But if Hampshire has taught me something, it's to love them. I invite you to love your petty haters and feel the warmth with which they embrace you. Let's, let's twirl on our haters and cover their shit on glitter to make it gold. Because at the end of the day, in the digital era, Every click they make on you makes you easier to find. Every time your names appears in their toxic mouths, your reputation, story, and seeds get dispersed. I do not know where life will take us. Commencement is indeed more uncertainty than it is stability. But I am comforted by those who have walked through these lawns, those that also survived and are disrupting and spreading seeds of dissent, evolution, and revolution. The world is not ready for us, but we are more than ready for it. May our gods and ancestors protect us and guide us in our new journeys. May we stay with each other in years to come. Thank you and congratulations.